It's likely we'll keep seeing Splatoon 3's pool of challenges grow as time goes on. But can I have a choice in what some of those challenges are, please? I've crafted 15 options for new challenges that honestly, Nintendo, you, you can have them. Here, here. First off, we've got taking turns. It's a, a weapon swap. That, that's all it is. <laughs> Whenever you get splatted, the person that splatted you, not the person who got the assists, will automatically switch weapons with you. So let's say you're playing Splatana Wiper, and your opponent has a splatter shot. You run in, you get the splat, uh-oh. Now you're holding a splatter shot. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you're now shooting with a splatter shot instead. Weirdly enough, there could be some amount of strategy to this. Imagine purposely picking your game to start with you playing the Neo Splushomatic, just so you can run in there and take some weapon away from one of your opponents. <laughs> if you play something that's relatively difficult to use, you could also curse your opponents with that as well. And if you're a jack of all trades, this might be a really fun game for you to play. This next challenge is more of a throwback. This is the Tower of Power. It's original tower control with no checkpoints, but if you're splatted on the tower, you respawn like you have respawn Punisher equipped. Kind of a pain. That means that you gotta be really careful whenever you get on that tower. But because there's no checkpoints, if nobody's watching you, you could run that tower up to a real good number really quick. Just, uh, just hope the enemy team doesn't have too many bombs or like a charger or something. Or if you see somebody coming, get off of the tower. So when you get splatted, you still get to take advantage of stuff like your QR. This one might be one of my favorites just cause it like rewards people who get a little too wacky and make a run for it. This is them's the breaks where any clam is able to automatically enter the basket, breaking it for your team. But super clams are now worth 30 points just to make sure they're not irrelevant. To prevent an instant KO, knockout conditions here have been increased to 150 points instead of the usual 100. Only one team can have their basket open at a time, so of course keep that in mind. I don't know man, if I'm playing this, I'm on the brush. I'm going, I'm going, you can't stop me. I'm gonna get splatted like 10 times, but it's gonna feel good when I'm the one that's breaking the basket. Yes. <laughs> There'd be an extreme amount of value in a game like this to run quick super jump and also just have people jumping on over to you. Okay, okay, I got a goofy and silly one. This is Hat Potato. It's a Rainmaker mode in which when you're splatted, the Rainmaker instantaneously switches hands. <laughs> the only time it can go back to the center is if both teams wipe out at once. The only way for it to be on the floor is at a checkpoint, you know, when it's first broken. Otherwise, the Rainmaker is always in play. From the moment that Rainmaker is first touched, it's go, go, go. It could be very dangerous, but it could also be very fun. Uh, make sure you don't wipe out, because the enemy team's just gonna get to go right away. <laughs> it's basically Rainmaker if there weren't the precautions in the way that prevent people from instantly starting to push. Next up, welcome to Swim or Sink. What's up with that title? Well, you better start swimming more often because anytime that you're not in the ink, you're taking a little bit of damage. Think about what happens when you're standing in enemy ink. You get slowed down, you take a bit of damage, you don't wanna be there. Well, in this mode, you won't get slowed down, but you will be taking continuous small amounts of damage anytime that you're not submerged in your own ink. What a pain! A mode like this would be really fun for some weapons that get pretty close to hitting certain thresholds, like let's say weapons that do 32 damage a shot or 24 damage a shot, just not enough to be able to get to that next point. It'd be easy to pick people off on accident this way. Also remember that one of the gimmicks of Splatoon is any time that someone is damaged, you can see them on your minimap. Sounds like free point sensors to me. <laughs> this next one is just called Cannonball. <laughs> it's because every single super jump automatically ends with a splashdown. Can you take advantage of this and just jump to one of your teammates that's right next to you during a push? Absolutely. 
Depending on what mode they play this on, you could take super duper advantage of this in like splat zones. Hopefully you don't get splatted after you land though, because that could still happen. Once you're done super jumping, you're just there. Be careful. If you're not a fan of the swapping that went on with taking turns, maybe you'd be more of a fan of switcheroo. What'll happen in switcheroo is every single time one minute goes by in the match you're in, your weapon is automatically changed out for one randomly within the same weapon class. So let's say you're playing a good old splatter shot. Whoops. Now you're playing a jet squelter. Your teammate on the squiff. Whoops. They're playing now a splat charger. I was thinking like the randomizer. Had to take a moment. <laughs> really makes you think though, because if you're playing a shooter class weapon, there's so many different guns you could get. Whereas if you're playing a duelies, maybe you'd be more aware of what you're gonna do since there's less of them. Here's an evil challenge. I think everyone would hate this one. Welcome to Squared. Every single splat zone has been split into four even pieces. If you own at least three of four, you get points. Yay! You could go out of your way to get all four of the zones. It's also pretty useful to prevent the enemy team from easily bouncing back. This one doesn't feel as likely as some of the other options I've given in this video, just because they'd have to redesign the maps a little bit to fit like four different zones. But hey, who says it can't happen? <laughs> Next one is a twist on the classic infinite ink idea. This is instant refill. Your ink tank will instantly refill, but only when you run out completely. So you can't cheat by throwing a bomb and then trying to press for a new one. You gotta let it run dry first. So if your bomb uses 70% of your ink tank, but you still have a few shots left over, you gotta start firing your gun before you get another bomb. Good try. One way you could cheat this system is find out exactly how many subs you need to get to halfway, and, and then you could start pew pewing bombs, but just think about it. Even if you had one extra shot left in your gun, you'd have to use it before you could go back to double bombing. <laughs> Speaking of doubles, here's double trouble. Any regular abilities like run speed or ink recovery, for example, provide double the effect now. However, the old 57 point rule applies, so it's not worth wearing more than two mains and three subs of any ability. A regular ability, one that goes in your main slot, is now worth 20 points. And now, a sub ability is worth six. Why not give it a shot? Maybe you could finally get that big old run speed build you've never been able to try. It'll be especially great for people who really don't have a lot of gear and want to see what it's like to have boosted stats. Also, I could just run like full sub saver and full run speed and have a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, okay. Instead of doubling stuff, let's have something. This is clocks a ticking. The amount of time in a ranked game, cut in half. Every minute counts. It's better than making the score tick twice as fast because lockouts would lead to very, very quick game overs. No more of all this, oh, you know, if I just had one minute more in the game, I could have turned this over. No. No, you don't get that. You don't get that. The game's over in two minutes and 30 seconds. Better go. <laughs> this next challenge is just a little bit evil. This is called Tread Carefully. You can only turn into a squid once every two seconds. And by that, I mean when you pop back out, you have to stay in kid form for two seconds leaving you vulnerable and really messing with your muscle memory. Having a small pop-up saying, can't swim, appear on the screen might help out a lot. It means if you're in the middle of a fight and normally you'd like swim away from it, you, you can't, you can't. <laughs> Good luck. You know, a lot of the challenges in this game lock everybody out unless you have a specific weapon with a specific special. Well, here's the opposite. You can pick any weapon that you want, however, at the start of the game, every player is assigned the same special, at random, from the total pool of specials in the game. Because you keep the same main and sub, you might want to plan your strategy with your teammates around the weapons you're using, and not as much around the special. You can get anything, from quad wave breaker, to quad cooler, to like four inkjets. And finally, I think this one brings up the silly factor just right. This one's called What's in My Packet. It's simply that every single time that you get splatted, you get a brand new sub-weapon. Otherwise, game is 100% normal. 
So it's kind of like unless, but a little bit different because your sub weapon is always changing. It might make you play a little bit more carefully if you have something you really like. Like, let's say you get splat bombs. Or maybe you get a sub weapon you don't care for too much, like wall. Maybe you'll run on in. Or maybe you get a combination of sub and main weapon you've always wanted. Whether it's really good or not, and you just kind of don't engage too much because you want to keep it as long as possible. <laughs> After having challenges like the one where the point sensors instant kill you, or like the one like swim it to win it, where you can very obviously just get free swim speed up the wazoo, what's stopping Nintendo from taking challenges just one more step forward? That's why I really feel like any of the challenges I mentioned here today really are possible. Let me know some other challenge ideas you've had in the comments below. I don't know, maybe we can make another one of these sometime if you enjoy them. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and make sure to subscribe for more Splatoon shenanigans in the future. And I hope you liked my challenge ideas. If any of them ever become real, I will be celebrating. Yeah! <laughs> Bye!